When I was getting ready for my trip to Disney World back in October 2014, I watched a lot of videos on YouTube and thought, why not put some more information out there and see if I can help somebody else out uh, who might be wondering about, you know, opinions or thoughts about certain parts of the park or the experiences that I had when I was there. So I guess uh, my unique experience would be I am the 30 year old Disney virgin. I went there with my wife, mother-in-law and teenage sister-in-law. And I'll just say the, these were the experiences that I had while I was there. I figured I'd start with the Magic Kingdom because we stayed there for five days and the Magic Kingdom was the first place that we uh, went to. And it was also the place that we went to the most. So to start off uh, day one, which was a Sunday for us, uh, we walked around the Magic Kingdom for 12.5 uh, miles uh, that day because my mother-in-law and wife have, you know, when she was younger, they would go there a lot. So they have what they do. They have their plan. And if you happen to see the pen popping up, it's because I have a list of things in front of me, my little cheat sheet here. So I remember to try and touch on certain points. Uh, I'll also try and interject photos and videos where I can. So you're not just staring at uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean shirt that I wore the first day I was there uh, because I had the shirt before I went there. Uh, so I guess to start off, uh, I'll try and do it in somewhat of a sequence, uh, but I, I will not be able to remember everything in sequence when we were there. So to start off uh, on the first day, we had a character breakfast at the Crystal Palace. Uh, so that was an 8 a.m. character breakfast. That was kind of cool because you got inside the park early. There weren't many people there. So you could actually kind of walk down Main Street and not have people bumping into you. And you could also get your pictures in of the castle. Uh, we went during Halloween, so we had the Halloween pictures. I probably won't be interjecting those because uh, I'm trying to keep family off the Internet as per their requests. So uh, Crystal Palace character breakfast early in the morning, you get to walk down Main Street, you get to kind of check things out before things are up and running, start uh, your day off with a good breakfast. It was a uh, buffet style breakfast where you also got to do the character meet and greet. Uh, so the Crystal Palace had the Winnie the Pooh characters. Uh, I generally was the one taking the pictures of sister-in-law and wife with the characters. Uh, I also went down when it was my birthday, so had a little Mickey confetti on the table and I got a little cupcake, which I'll probably interject here. It's the only time I took a picture of food because I'm not one of those people who takes pictures of food. So after the Crystal Palace, uh, the quote unquote first area that we went to was uh, Adventureland because they kind of go counterclockwise as opposed to clockwise in the, the hub. So on our way to the first ride that I went on, uh, we stopped by the Swiss family treehouse. At, my mother-in-law described it as, you know, oh, it's really good, you have to go see it. And then proceeded to say, I'll be waiting by the exit. The, the treehouse itself was really cool. You kind of go up into it and, you know, look at how the Swiss family, Robinsons, you know, grabbed all their stuff in the boat and made it into a treehouse. It, it's really cool even uh, even if you're an adult, it's it's nice to see how they stage things, how they laid things out. Uh, also, kind of looking at some of the furniture going, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind having that. So my first official ride at Walt Disney World was the Jungle Cruise. It's, it's really, it, it's a sit down water boat ride. It is really campy. Now, the, I don't want to say the problem with the Jungle Cruise is... Uh, it's very dependent on the person who's giving the cruise. So if you have a very enthusiastic skipper, um, you'll have a really good experience. If you have a kind of more nonchalant laid back skipper, not so much. I mean, I watched quite a few of them online before we went there. I watched a lot of things online before I went to here, went to Disney World, but I've seen really enthusiastic, enthusiastic skippers. Uh, my first one, not so much. I don't know if it was just so early in the morning, but she wasn't really into it. Uh, we did go back 
like I said, we went back to the Magic Kingdom three times on our trip. And the second time I did it, I had a, a trainee. So not too great of experiences with the skippers. It, but it was still an enjoyable ride. I knew what I was getting into. It was, it was fun. After that, the next big ride that we did was Splash Mountain, which we rode several times on several different days, on several different occasions. Uh, you will get wet, but it was, it was definitely fun. Uh, it's, it's, I want to say, one of the longer rides, uh, as I recall, at the park. It's, uh, it's got very good theming as you know well as the ride itself there are several little drops before you actually hit the big drop and all i remember seeing uh when i was going up for the big drop was the two vultures and then we kind of got to the top and started peeking over and i just went oh what did i get myself into uh it still was an extremely fun ride and you should do it several times if you go uh best bet is actually if you go uh if they have extra magic hours and you go back at night not too many people want to ride it because it's kind of cooler at night so you'll have the place to yourself we uh my wife sister-in-law and myself uh ended up going back to the park late one night and there was like nobody around and we kind of went on it three times in a row like we just hey can we go on this again yeah sure didn't even get off the ride just floated down again so that, that was kind of fun uh, right off after that, because it's in close proximity to uh, Splash Mountain, we did Big Thunder Mountain. And Big Thunder Mountain is is pretty cool. Well, no, better than pretty cool. It, it's really cool. I liked it. Uh, the, the waiting area for the ride is also very cool because it's, it's interactive. I really wish I took pictures of stuff when I was there, but I was, I was kind of immersed in my first experience and didn't want to be videotaping and photographing all the time. But the... The, wait, the waiting area for, you know, standby as opposed, well, FastPass had a little bit of it, but standby you had much, much more. Uh, it, it's, it's just good. It's a lot of interactive. It gets a little hot up at the top, but aside from that, really good. Uh, the ride itself, awesome. A little loud uh, going through some of the tunnels. That's one of the things I didn't really expect was just the amount of noise on just all the rides. It, it, it's, I know it's, you know, to immerse you into the, the environment, but some of the rides were just loud and Big Thunder Mountain was one of them. Just the sound of the tracks that that railroad click, click, click was, was really loud. But um, the ride itself we did on both the daytime and at night, and I'll admit it was a lot more fun at night. And I'm fairly certain this is where I found a hidden Mickey. Uh, when you're going up to the right of the cart, I wanna say, there's the cave with the stalactites and stalagmites. And if you look in the center of one of the pools, I'm fairly certain that I saw a hidden Mickey. If you know for sure, let me know, because I would like to know that I'm right and can kind of hold it above my wife and mother-in-law's head, because uh, they did not believe me. Um, so now we're gonna start getting a little bit out of order because I don't remember exactly what we hit after that. Um, so I'm just gonna say Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion, I would have to say is probably my favorite ride in the Magic Kingdom, partially because when I was younger, I really didn't like haunted um, anything, like like ghosts and haunted houses. They, they scared me when I was younger. So this was very cool. Um, we got stuck on it twice. Uh, and like I said, this was another one of the rides we went on quite a few times. So the first time I went on this, we got stuck in the graveyard for like 10 minutes. But it was kind of cool because at you know, once you're stuck on the ride for too long, they kind of lower the sound in the background. So you don't have the, the busts singing their song over and over again. So you could actually kind of hear some of the ambient noises that are being made uh, and some of the actual ghosts themselves that are singing the song. So that was really, really cool. Every time we went on it, I saw something new. I really liked it. Uh, the one downfall is I'm not a tall guy. I'm only like 5'7", and the, the doom buggy I felt like I was hitting my head on it. I'm just throwing that out there. But again, it's a really cool ride. The walk-in, I, I really, because we fast passed it for a couple of days. So we never got to do the standby line. So I never got to see like a lot of the extra little bits. Uh, did see the Mr. Toad uh, graveyard or tombstone, which was cool, as well as the, uh, the hearse and what have you up front. While I think of it, the first time I went on it as well, they, they kind of shoved us in like sardines. It, it was really weird. 
like in the stretching room, they use the stretching room as a way to parse out people who are waiting for the actual ride inside. And the first time we did it, they kind of shoved everybody in there and they did like three stretch rooms worth and kind of packed everybody in. So it was, it was a little cramped that first time and it, it did not make for a pleasant experience the first time I went on it, which is probably also why the ride broke down three times or, or broke down uh, for 15 minutes when we were on it the first time. But it's definitely nice and AC once you get inside. So it, it, it's... It is worth doing this ride. I, I, I know I'm making it sound like it was kind of bad. It wasn't bad. It was just that first day that we were there. I guess they were trying to keep the wait time outside down. So they just kind of kept shoving people in. Now, one of the, uh, the, the rides, it was a show actually, that we did was Mickey's Magic. I wasn't sure I would actually enjoy this, uh, partially because it was in the middle of the day. I was starting to get hot and tired having drove 20 hours and just getting there the day before on a Sunday and having like five hours of sleep. Uh, so I was a little bit uh, cranky, we'll say. Uh, but the show was really, really good. They give you 3D glasses. You have things flying at you, uh, water spraying you in the face. I thought it was going to be like just sit down, watch a 3D uh, Mickey Symphony. Not quite that. Don't want to spoil anything if you haven't seen it, but it, it, was, it was very good. Probably the freakiest was the, I'll, I'll give this one little bit away. The freakiest was the Little Mermaid scene uh, where you have like things kind of floating underwater at you. But it, it, that was pretty cool. And well, we're seeing because it's another sit down air conditioned show. And if you're in the heat of the day, it, it's a good idea. Uh, I'll admit that after that, I was, I was much, much better. Uh, so if you're looking for a midday break to cool down and watch an awesome show, I would highly recommend that. So if you're watching this and the Snow White minecart ride is still fairly new, just be aware uh, as filming of this in 2014, it is going to be a long wait. Fast pass this ride if you can. I will admit the fast pass is filled up very, very quickly. In fact, our fast passes for both times that we rode this were after six. We managed to, to change one of our fast passes midday one day and ride it during the day. So we got both uh, the day and night for this ride. And I'll say two things. Nighttime is definitely the way to go if you're just wanting to enjoy the ride and not worry about like the scenery and the theming. Uh, second, the back of this ride is where you want to be. The, the front is fun because we did, we did the absolute front and then the second car to the back and you get a lot more speed and a lot more swinging in the back of the cart. So that's where you wanna be. Also, just remember to, to distribute your weight so that the cart rocks back and forth uh, because it does rock back and forth. And if you can kind of get a nice swing going, it makes the ride all that much more fun. While I'm, while I'm on the topic of rides and just other things to think about when you're at the Magic Kingdom, like I said, first time for me being here. So uh, I trying to take it all in. Uh, one of the things I haven't seen any videos of really were, you know, I, I know it's an odd topic, but the, the restrooms, the restroom that I found that was the least busy and well, they were all clean, but the least busy and just nicely sized, we'll say, I guess, um, was the Rapunzel rest area. There'll be a lot of people out front charging their phones uh, or, you know, stowing their strollers but the restrooms themselves are kind of like set back a little ways. So it might look busy, but they're not really busy. Uh, so if you have children who are kind of finicky about the bathroom, uh, it's, it's where I would recommend going. It wasn't highly trafficked and was very, very clean. Uh, the one downfall, at least for the male bathrooms, there was no hook on the back of the door. Uh, so if you're going in there with a book bag, since I was the pack mule for my family, uh, that kind of got a little difficult, but, uh, you can figure it out. All right, uh, next thing we did was, well, not the next thing we did, but the next thing I'll talk about is Space Mountain. Uh, we rode this a lot. Like, like this was another one of those rides that we rode several times. Uh, the first day that we got there, we had a fast pass for this late in the evening. Uh, we went back to the hotel, took a little break, and then we're coming back to Space Mountain. 
Uh, so my wife, sister-in-law, and I sprinted from the front of the park all the way to where Space Mountain is and had just a minute to spare on our fast passes. But it was well worth it. It is a crazy fast ride. There's two tracks. I believe it's, um, I forget what they're called, but there are two different tracks. Uh, the, the cast members said they're pretty much the same, but my wife and sister-in-law insisted that one was better than the other. And one track definitely felt like it had more drops in it. So you go up and down, up and down, because the other one has more turns. I don't remember which one was which, but um, it's a fun ride. It's a single seat, uh, three people to a cart, and a little stowage area for uh, small valuables. Uh, this is not a ride you want to bring your book bag on. So it kind of worked out in our favor that we went back to the hotel first because I didn't have my book bag this time around. And I am looking at the record time on this and this is actually turning out to be much longer than I anticipated. I didn't want to do this, but I think I'm gonna break this up into two different videos. Like I said, we came to the Magic Kingdom a lot. So the last thing I'll say for this particular one, and then I'll cut and make a different one, is uh, one of the places that we ate. Actually, it's like the only place that, well, it's one of the places that we ate frequently because it's cheap, fast, and easy to get to. Uh, Casey's Corner, it's kind of hot dogs and fries and drinks. Uh, so if you're, and then this is located at the front of the park. So if you're trying to get in here uh, during a parade or when everybody's trying to leave the park, it's gonna be a little tricky. But if you're on your way into the park, it should be easier to just kind of hop over, get in here. So. Food was good, prices were okay. Uh, this is one of the places that you can get a free cup of ice water and it did not taste terrible. It, there's a couple places in the parks that have filtered water. I'm not sure if this was filtered, but it definitely had a low Florida taste. And if you're from outside of Florida, you kind of know what a Florida taste is. It's difficult to describe, but I kind of think it's kind of sulfury. But uh, yeah, so that is where I'm going to leave off for this particular video. So we'll, we'll call this day one at the Magic Kingdom. Uh, if you have questions, comments, leave them here or wherever YouTube puts them now. And uh, thanks for watching.